Okay, um, next up is Sue Steele Thomas. Sue started teaching as an adjunct in the art department in 2001. She became full-time in 2005. Her specialty is studio art. That means drawing, design, watercolor, illustration, and art history. She especially loves teaching Art 247, which is painting technique for illustrators because it combines every skill that students have learned thus far in their program of study. She won the Museum's Choice Award 2013 for her solo exhibit at the Auburn Corps Duesenberg Museum in Auburn, Auburn, Indiana. She displayed 17 work of, works of art at this exhibit, and it was in 2014. She, and in the future, she's been asked to participate in the following by invitation only exhibit at the Alt Park Concours de Elegance, how about that, uh, in Cincinnati, Ohio in June of 2005 and in the Keeneland Concour Concours de Elegance in Lexington, Kentucky in July of 2015. Also, Sue was the recipient of the 2014 Excellence in Teaching Award. So, without further ado, if Sue Steele Thomas could come up and talk to us about. <laughs> Sue is going to give us a, a driving tour with car art. So, she's going to talk to us about what she does outside of the classroom and how it comes into the classroom. Yes? Unless you, unless you want to talk down there, if you would feel better. This one it makes it advance, I think. Hello. <laughs> I love technology. Is it up here? That's not it. Old PowerPoint? Is that what it is? Mm -hmm. That's it. Oh. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is when I was young. <laughs> well, this was yesterday. Where'd it go? Oh, there we go. Yay. You like that photo? Yeah. It's a classic. I think I'll keep it forever. <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I am so honored to be showing my automotive art. You have no idea. Uh, I'm really proud of what I do. Uh, it's been a great journey. I, um, I paint every day, or at least I try to, so I practice what I teach and preach, and I'm really glad to see some of my students here. So let me give you this little uh, hop in, you know, start our engines, and let me give you a, a little journey of what I've been doing since I was in my early 20s. How's that? And remember, this picture was just yesterday. <laughs> and this goes, don't have to say. Anywhere? No. Anywhere? Push to the left, To the left? To the left? To the left? That little left hand there. How about to the right? Oh, there we go. My right, so, no. There are some, one of the things about history is that you get to photograph um, yourself and it's been just putting this together has been really interesting because I different hairdos uh, different clothes I've watched my evolution happen and I've watched this and, and my dear husband has we've watched it and watched it and watched it so I hope that uh, I've culled it down to entertain you all uh, this is a painting by the title of Weather Alpha, and I did it in 2011. So I have the year, and then I'll tell you a little bit about it. And you're probably thinking, what has she done to these automobiles? Well, a um, long time ago, I had an incredible mentor, still do, who was the art director for Road Track Magazine for 40 years, and I'll show you a picture of Bill. And he said, if you're gonna make it in this industry, you have to be different. You have to be really good at what you do, but you have to be different. So I have worked <laughs> diligently at being different. Um, I like putting nature on top of my cars. Um, there are some great automotive artists who paint realism. So I decided that I needed to do something that was along my abstraction and the love that 
from my beginning painting. Believe it or not, I was an abstract painter. Um, kind of hard to believe. Well, it's all come to, it's, I've come full circle, put it that way. Okay, this is supposed to make you go, aww. <laughs> Christmas morning with my brother Greg and my sister Barb. Check out the man from Uncle Game. And this is little Susie Steele painting, an oil painting of a clown. And if you look at it really closely, I already have oil paint on my nose. And my sweet father took this photo. So that's what I'm looking at. I didn't do this in order. I thought that would probably bore you. So I didn't go from being five to being <clears throat> 29 again in this picture. A friend of mine took this photo and you can just look at my face and I'm going, I mean, I, this was pretty tough competition at this show. I was really surprised. Do I look surprised? And I look very happy. I had an incredible offer to create a poster for the Classic Car Club of America and I worked on this project for a year. Now think about that, students. A year. You're going, am I done yet? Am I done yet? Um, it was, I took all the photos of the cars the year before this. I did research. I did big thumbnails. The curator of this show was really tough on me. He's like, this is no good. You got to redo this and on and on and on. I mean, I worked really, really hard. So this is the, the painting finished. This, this is a 36 by 24 size painting, and let me tell you a little bit about gouache. Gouache is opaque watercolor. It has a temperament of its own, and uh, this is a really big painting. Everything I do is a little shape, and so I'm turning it around, and I'm flipping it around, and just trying to actually be able to get to it, so you can imagine how thrilled I was when it was done. See? <laughs> I'm smiling at my dear Rad. Um, if I didn't have Rad to do my incredible digital, well, he's my digital genius, he took this painting and we had to turn it into a poster. And this is the actual poster. If you all want my autograph, it's free just because you're my colleagues. Um, it's incredible when people come up to you and say, will you autograph this for me? And I'm like, okay, head, you got to shrink back so I can get through the doorway. <laughs> the same year, 2010, and we talk about why don't things, why aren't things spaced out, right? Well, I had these two big projects in 2010, so I was some painting fool. And after I got back from Hickory Corners, Michigan with the CCCA, I then had to finish up and go to Cincinnati. I was the first female ever asked in 33 years to create the image for the show. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, so they gave me the hardest assignment. I had to research all the cars and anyway, I got it done. So I, and that was the weekend after the previous. So it was some, June was an amazing month in 2010. I was also asked to paint a gas pump. This is a great story. There were six automotive artists from the United States asked to, invited, and I was one of them. And I'm like, how do you paint a gas pump? So they actually sent the shell of the pump, the old fashioned pump, to us, and the UPS man offered to help open the box so he could see it. Um, anyway, I, I'm like, how do I put water-based paint on a metal pump? So I ended up doing decoupage. Barb, you know what that is. And I cut up my G-clay prints, and I cut them into little pieces, and I have four different paintings on four sides of the pump. How cool is that? And then it was auctioned off, and we raised about $60,000 for the museum in Hershey, Pennsylvania. So it's kind of fun to donate what you do. 
It took me three and a half months to glue all these little pieces of paper on this pump. I look relieved again, don't I? I'm showing you the happy pictures. The other ones with my hair all twisted up, with the same shirt on I've had on for three days. You don't get to see those, okay? And because we donated this, we got a brick. Have any of you ever gotten a brick? Not by one of your students. <laughs> This is my brick on the, uh, on the Hall of Fame, so it's there for eternity and you can walk on it. So, my brick. We have a great website, so if you all are really interested, uh, please, it's autofineart.com, I'm sure you can remember that. Please go look at uh, the creative and very incredible uh, webmaster, my husband. Go look at the site, I think you'll enjoy it. And we rotate some art, and you can also see some of his. Uh, this painting, I use the trees, the dead trees that are currently in our backyard. Remember, we have dead trees right now. That's what's reflecting on this car. So I'm inspired by just looking out the window going, I hope one day you have leaves, and soon. She doesn't get any happier, does she? Um, this was huge. This show is a really big show, and to be, I was one of 16 artists invited, and uh, my students always say, well, why did you win first place? And I said, I'm going back next year. And then I'm going back next year, so I'm not done. This is a painting, um, that I thought when I did it, people would think I was absolutely mad. You know, what is this woman doing putting these grasses and clouds on top of this beautiful jaguar? Well, guess what? It turned out to be a magical painting and it was very well received. Um, it was published in Road and Track and uh, it's won awards. I've sold many prints from it, so, and I still own the original, so if you need that extra gift, just come talk to me. <laughs> When you get an email that says, we want to come out and do, we want to put you on the evening news, I thought, okay, well, this is, this is not for real. Nobody wants, no, no. Anyway, this was for real, and I know you all know who Jean Jadhan is. Let me tell you something about doing a little story. Do you know how much footage they have to shoot? My story was two minutes and 36 seconds, and they were there for two and a half hours. And the one great thing about Jean um, is that Jean looked at me and she, she said, where's a mirror? She says, let me go check my makeup. And I'm like, wait a minute, let me go check my makeup. So I got to go check my makeup with, with the pro. So, but it was a lot of fun having them film and what they would cut out. And one of my favorite parts is they said, can you paint? And I'm painting and she's asking me to turn, you know, to answer questions and I keep turning around. She says, stop turning around. So I tried to behave. Um, that's a hard job, shooting footage. Anyway, I hope mine was pretty interesting for Channel 7. She's happy. You think when you go somewhere and you set up a show that it's just, uh, oh, wow, you just go and your paintings magically get up on the screens and everything looks fabulous. Let me tell you, Rad and I have some road stories that uh, rain and storms and hauling and unloading and packing, art is not always absolutely glamorous. So when you have your show up, you feel good about it. I am really honored to be to have been accepted into this organization for a lot of reasons, but there are women all over the world that really um, are incredible artists and in all fields. And I feel like I have been a pioneer in the automotive art world. When I first started doing this for Road and Track, I was only the second female ever published in that magazine. So we, I've come a long way. So this, this is an honor, but it's an honor, give you a little bit of art history, because Mary Cassatt, ever heard of Mary Cassatt? She was the first female, thank you, Shane. She was the first, one of my good art history students. She was the first female that became an impressionist painter. So she was a founding member of this organization. I think that's, I don't know why they let me in, but I'm really glad I can say I'm in a club with Mary Cassatt. She's happy. 
Now you all know by now that when she looks like that, her show is set up, right? This is Sue. Uh, we were in Auburn, Indiana, and there were cars, 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 and more cars and cars and cars. We were, we were pretty carred out, weren't we? When you travel to California from Roanoke, Virginia, you can't put your uh, art in the back of the van like we normally do, so you got to get it there some way. So we built my stepson and Rad built these fabulous crates, and I also have a picture of the FedEx truck hauling them away, and those guys promised me they'd get them there safely, and they did. Uh, these are 10 paintings that went out to Pebble Beach, California. I got to do the oldest Concours in the world uh, in 2013 as a guest artist, which was really a big deal. So I got to play with the big boys. So the, there are 10 paintings on their way to California. They're there, thank you. Should have put the FedEx truck. Um, at the end of that event in California, um, I was elected to become an associate member of the Automotive Fine Arts Society, which is the premier society in the world. They have 25 active members, and I'm the third female ever inducted into that organization. And let me tell you, the guys that are in here are the people who design our automobiles for real. They're not just fine artists, so to play with them and to exhibit with them is pretty big honor. They still frighten me. So hopefully one day I won't be quite as scared of them. I probably scare them too. This was my exhibit at Pebble Beach. And the show is sponsored by Lincoln Motor Company. Everybody, anybody ever heard of Lincoln? And our pavilion, our tent, was a structure like you cannot believe. It was carpeted and it, you know, uh, it was air conditioned, heated, I mean really first class, had real doors on it. Ever been in a tent like that? No, we live in Roanoke, Virginia, so. I tell my students that if you have one fan in your lifetime, you should really take care of them. Look, I have two. This was an article when they inducted me into the Automotive Fine Arts Society. I can send you the link, you can look at it. And then here's the owner of the 1933 Duesenberg. Uh, his name is Clem, great story. Uh, I love my clients, I take good care of them and they take good care of me. Everything has, um, as I tell my students, all of my stories are true. This one was a great one because he said, um, this was the year before I did the painting, he said, do you have a camera? And I said, yes. And he said, well, could you come take a picture of my car? And when we go to find the car, you can't see the car because there are people around this car, whatever it is. And all of a sudden the people part and I see this fabulous 1933 Duesenberg that's probably worth about two and a half million dollars. And Clem says, yep, that's just one of mine. You think you can take a picture of it? And he says, do you think you can paint a painting? And I said, yes, sir. So he was a great client. Um, I look forward to painting some of those other 40, 50 cars he has. This one should bring a smile. This is just uh, uh, some flowers on top of a Bentley. Here's my mentor, um, great honor to have finally met him. So this is the one and only William A. Mata, who is one of the top automotive painters in the world and was the art director for 40 years. And I told him, what happened when you got my art in the mail? He would say, it always went in either the yes or the maybe stack. That's a pretty nice thing to hear from your mentor. And he still pushes me to this day. Plus, I got to finally exhibit with him. Look, those are my paintings behind him. Does she look happy or what? We had had about two and a half hours of sleep between taking the show down in the Ritz-Carlton and putting it up on the field. So no sleep for the weary. So thank goodness we, we lived, huh, honey? <laughs> 
you got to get out and you got to travel. And when I was in Florida doing the show, I met someone from Virginia. How, how funny is that? And so this is from, anybody heard of Distinction, which is a magazine in the Hampton Roads area? Uh, they came out and let me tell you something, they spent five hours taking pictures of me. I'm a pretty humble person and I mean, you could probably take one of me right now and it'd be all right. I was so exhausted and anyway, this is, it's crazy what they do with them, you know. Did you buy some? <laughs> um, so I got a nice article in a Virginia magazine on my automotive art. I thought this was the better part than the photos. Um, there's a picture of my studio. I'm painting a painting and my palette. And thank you, Debbie. One of my students is a, an aficionado with flowers. And I said, what are these flowers on this car? And she said, they're red Shasta daisies. So that's the title. Thank you. And there's the painting I just finished. My goal is to make sure that the flowers and the, the automobile are equal. I'm, I want you to look at the flowers and go, wow, these are flowers, and connect all of those sections. And then I want you to go, there's a car under there. Oh my gosh. And connect that. So this is the new direction for my automotive art. OK, I need a smile. It's really mine. Someone tried to outbid me, and I said no. And he said, this is for my grandson. And I said, really? This is for me? <laughs> Another one of my, here's my abstraction and my past history coming through. This is a commission I did a long time ago for a, an amazing client. Uh, this is really Mike in his Cobra. You like that? Wouldn't you like to be in it right now? <laughs> Another one of Mike's um, cars. And the great thing about this client is he told me he saw one of his cars was published in Road and Track a long time ago. And he says, if you do that one, if you can paint that, if you can paint paintings in five or six weeks, I'll give you business. And so I did all three of his cars. And let me tell you something, if he asked me, if anyone asked me to do something in five or six weeks, there's no way. I was younger then. This is a, a new painting, same thing, flowers and car. Uh, this is also in the faculty show. Great story with this client. Um, Bill is this wonderful person. He lives in Charleston, West Virginia, and he, um, do I need to wrap it up? I have five minutes, okay. Anyway, he saw this painting and he said, um, I want you to know that I'm buying the painting. He's a Rolls-Royce collector. His family owns one of every Rolls-Royce ever manufactured. And he said, now think about that. Yeah, you need to let that kind of uh, sink in. He said, but you know why I bought the painting? Not because it's a Rolls-Royce. I bought it because of the art. I smiled all the way home. And that was a 12-hour journey. And where is the painting now? Hey, the painting, thank you for your question. <laughs> The painting is underneath his bed. <laughs> he puts his really favorite paintings under his bed. And I am just thrilled that right now it's under his bed. He, he, he says he has a small house. Somehow I have trouble believing that. But my pa that painting is under his bed. This is another crazy abstract painting. Uh, no, you can't have this car either. I think they're only, what, six? So, but you can dream about it and you can paint them. This was published in Road and Track. This has been a great painting for me. Uh, I've sold more prints of this painting than any other painting that I've ever done. And who owns that painting? Uh, this is owned by Dr. Radford Thomas. <laughs> <laughs> it better not be under the bed. So how did you get started painting automatically? My dad, um, you know, worked on them. My brothers had cars and motorcycles, and then Rad had a collection. So I just, you know, I, I thought they were just beautiful works of art. And so just being around them, and then being forced to do one when I was a sophomore as an undergraduate. So 
some because I wanted, some because I was forced. Isn't that a good reason to get into some career? <laughs> this was another published in Road and Track. Um, another published in Road and Track, and this, this um, was the cover of Automobile Quarterly, which was a book, and I, I had a feature story. This was huge. I mean, just working with people who work on these publications has been really incredible, and, and the delight of my world is to be published. That's all I know. Another oldie but goodie. <clears throat> now, if you purchase an original, the next time I do a PowerPoint, it will say the collection of, and your name can be there. This one has a great story. I'll just tell you briefly that the person that's driving the car owns the car and owns the painting, and his wife bought the painting as a surprise for his 60th birthday, and he didn't know that. And he had the car at a show. He said, Sue, can we take the painting out and have you and the painting in the car? And we're all going, yeah, but we can't tell you because your wife just bought this for you. So this was an incredible surprise for this wonderful guy. More great clients. I think some of you may know this lady by the name of Sarah Grubb. Well, let me tell you, working, trying to do this uh, and get it, get this car out of the garage so that Arthur didn't know, this was really difficult. But we did, although when he came home that day, he said, who's been here? And Sarah went out and raked the grass. Anyway, he didn't know. So this was his Christmas present years ago. Another great client. This one was purchased by John O'Quinn, who was a very famous um, attorney who was killed in a car wreck. And my painting was en route to him when he died. So this is a pretty somber painting, but that's okay. It has a new owner, and I think he's happy. Uh, a client from Indonesia, this was amazing. Just getting to work with people that you know see your images somewhere and contact you, that's a pretty great thing. This was the first one that really got me started in the botanical, the, you know, the, the nature imagery on top of my cars. A classic Buick, look at that grill. The story is that I got tired of painting this, I put it up, uh, we moved uh, 11 miles, we moved back in 2006, Rad got it out and said, here, you need to finish it. And I'm like, no, I'm done with this image. And he says, finish it. I painted it. We went to Cincinnati that June. The owner walked into my section and he said, that's my car, I'll buy it. Rad left the whole way home. <laughs> A little bit of NASCAR for you. Yes, I hand painted all of that text. <laughs> Uh, this was one of the first photographs where I photographed the car and then I did the painting long, long ago. This is a group of my peers. Don't they look frightening? And look at little Susie Steele sitting on the front row. <laughs> and I can hear my mother saying, now put your legs together, you know. <laughs> Here I am freezing, hanging my show at 5.30 a.m. in Florida. Let me tell you something. When when you go to Florida, it should not be cold. I think that should be against the law. I have never been this cold in my life. Some more happy clients. This, the painting on the left is a painting Rad just finished of um, Judge Sam Wilson. And Rad has been my art director and my mentor and he's pushed me and pulled me and he'll say, why aren't you in your studio? Get out of your office every day. Uh, Rad's a pretty good painter himself. Me in my studio, Tina Cook came over and took some great photos. Uh, Rad and I made the cover of our local magazine. Don't you like that? Ever been in the, on the cover of the Rolling Stone? And it's been an exciting journey so far, and thank you all for loving my automotive art. Thanks.